This is a band that I first came across because a pupil of mine actually randomly met them in a pub and um, wow. said that they were just lovely humans and very, very humble. And I didn't really know much about them. Uh, I just heard the name. And then I came across it on my YouTube. Uh, it just got pushed to me and I thought, hmm, it is about time I give them a listen. They are well known. And they, these two are a married couple. Also, if you guys are interested what it sounds like if I sing, um, I have just done a cover that goes out on Spotify and Apple. It's also here on YouTube and I'll put a link down in the description. So this intro blends a couple of instrumental pieces. Swamp Raga. Okay, before we get into this, the two are Swamp Raga and Little Martha, and you can hear why it's called a Raga, because it has a kind of uh, Indian sort of influence. Raga is the scales used in Indian music, and often using microtones or the notes in between the notes. So we might hear a little bit of that, that would be exciting. Um, and then it goes into the main theme of the song, Midnight in Harlem. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, interesting. Hammond organ there. So that organ is traditionally used in gospel music um, and you hear it on a lot of slow records, that's what that iconic sound is. Now um, this is done by E-Town, this is what this um, performance is for, and E-Town are a non-profit organisation that raise money for all sorts of things including housing, equity, climate action, community building and music education. So I will put a link down to the organisation as well since that is what they're raising money for. Well, I came to the city. Woo. I was run from the pain. Oh, that voice. So warm. My heart was bleeding. And it hurt my bones to lay. It's so smooth. No exception to the rules, to the rules. He was born to love me. I was raised to be as full of his food. So she was trained at Berklee College of Music, which is one of the most renowned music colleges in the world, especially in in like jazz and funk and things like that. And um, she sang in the gospel choir there, but she has oh such a smooth tone and such control so far. There's been no pitching issues, nothing like that. It's just smooth, controlled. It feels like a cuddle. Wonderful. Midnight up in Holland. 
to the river. You know, I always say this, I say this all the time in my videos, that it's amazing that you can kind of hear who a person is in their singing voice and there is an earthiness and a down-to-earthness in her voice. You can just imagine her, you know, they have two kids, her and the guitarist, and you can just imagine them kind of living a normal life where they're looking after their kids, and um, but yet living the best of their lives and really enjoying it and there's you can just hear that in in her voice it's so humbling and um, yet she has this ability to move through dynamics to be smooth yet cutting to uh, slide over notes yet be incredibly precise in moments and then it just has this warm soul to it took a look around just a tiny touch of distortion they were lovely men's shoes there were needles on the ground Secrets, no more clues, no more clues. There's like no tension in there at all. Stars around there, you can no more see the moon. So often people feel like they have to, there's this idea of like singing from the throat or bypassing the throat, and you know, you're not technically bypassing the throat, the air is moving through your throat or through your windpipe all the time. Um, but what is happening is there's no tension in her neck, in her jaw, in her tongue. She's just allowing. And this is, you know, I can tell this to people a hundred times and it's so hard to put into practice. It's hard for me to put into practice because singing is so, so vulnerable. As I say, it really shows who you are as a person. So when you stand in front of a microphone to just be like, I'm going to be here, be truly me and have no tension and not try. Yeah, <laughs> that's hard. That's really hard. And um, it says weird that she is not trying. She is not pushing into things. She's just shaping everything to make the noise that she wants, but she's not um, overly doing anything. I feel like we always feel like the best results happen the more we do, but it's being very wise about where we put that effort in is actually the most important thing. And 99% of my work as a vocal coach is getting people to take off the extra things that they are doing that they don't need to do um, and once they do their voice kind of flows out of them and things like pitching and stuff like that becomes less of a problem because because they're not getting in their own way and I, and I was saying when I was doing a singing thing the other day it's so hard to take your own advice sometimes ah. streets are with it in the subways close down
a calmness to both of their their singing and their playing and a, a kind of ability to just sit back on it and allow it to build with the music. The focus is on the music, not them showing off because both of them are highly, highly proficient. You can tell with the ease and nuance of their playing, even on the easy bits. Um, yet, they're not kind of overdoing it unless the song needs it. They they bring it to that place and, and also maybe it's something that we don't see as much now because of our short attention spans, but they're willing to let the song build through a long period of time to get the audience there, which makes that payoff oh so much more sweet. <laughs> so glad I finally got round to listening to these guys. They're absolutely brilliant and I would really love to see them live. I feel like it'd just be such a like experience of being like surrounded by the all these beautiful harmonics and sounds. It's like a wall of a, being wrapped in a nice cozy blanket or something. It's wonderful. And um, if you want to find out a little bit more about E-Town, all the information is down in the descriptions. You can donate to them. But for the meantime, I shall see you in the next one.